Oh, sie sind gerade auf Fahrgapparat. So, it seems like we had a bit of audio issues this morning, but you have got to see the pictures. Welcome to this glorious sunrise safari. My name's Brent Yearsmith, and I'm busy thawing from being a popsicle. I heard these lions roaring and mating from camp, rushed up into this area, and as we got here, they roared again, which led us to where they are. And as you would have seen in silence, they mated not so long ago. So, hopefully, they're going to mate again shortly. Now, with lions mating, on average, it's about once every 15 minutes. And that's the same male who we saw on yesterday's sunset safari uh, with the hole in his lip. And remember, we're on a live African safari. You are seeing this dozy male lion at the exact same time as us. And also, you can ask us questions uh, using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or pop us an email questions at wildearth.tv. And I have got Gerard on camera with me this morning and Jamie and Dangerous Dave are out on the other vehicle, and we have Rebecca and Louis, Louise in final control. Well, let's enjoy this golden morning light on these big cats. Uh, there's an Nkuma lioness. I'm not sure which one just yet. You can see it's got a very distinct little little scar there in the middle of it. There we go. There it is, under my finger. Oh, lovely, lovely light. Now, lucky for us, they didn't wander north. Oh, he looks so comfortable. So you just got to be on the game drive radio for a second. Oh, no. Aubrey's done the update for me, so I don't have to use the radio. Now we are in contact with all the other game drive vehicles out here. It helps us to find you guys the best sightings possible and for their guests. And I can hear Jamie's actually following up on leopard tracks at the moment. Now, Robin also noticed suckle marks, um, and Robin would like to know why is she mating with suckle marks. Now, that is a good question. There's, there's one of two uh, answers. She could have quite high estrogen and other, other hormones at the moment due to the fact she's just given birth, and that could be confusing the male. Unfortunately, the more likely scenario is that she's lost her cubs. Now, I'm not sure whether this lioness... I don't think it's the one who's got the tiny cubs uh, to the east of Buffalsook, and it's definitely not the one who's got the three uh, medium-sized, or not medium, they're still very tiny, but little cubs. So this is the th possibly the third in Kuma lioness, um, who, in not, who in knew what had given birth, because we could see the suckle marks on her, but we haven't seen the cubs yet. There's a possibility they've been killed, and that's why she's mating again. We're going to have to hang around here a bit longer to actually figure out exactly what's going on. And uh, the other option is she could just be mating to get rid of this guy's attentions so she can get back to her cubs. 
uh, because of that high issue, and the Cubs might be very, very young. It's, it's, it's going to be a very interesting story to see how this one pay, plays out. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Lovely morning light on that big boy's mane. He does look supremely comfortable. Now, unfortunately, it seems like Rusty's got a little bit of a technical issue, so Jamie's going to head back to see Peter and see if they can sort it out. Now, Kat is wondering, saying she's missed several drives, what happened to his mouth? Uh, well, he got into a fight, possibly with one of the other members of his coalition, uh, or even with a lioness. Uh, ripped lips in lions is not a, is a, actually quite a common injury, and you see it very often, especially in males who do a lot more fighting. And it's causing him a little bit of discomfort. I've been watching him yesterday and today, and, and he's constantly sort of playing with it and licking. Now, as I said, not an unusual injury in male lions. It's actually quite a common one to have their lips split. Now, we're not sure how it happened, but I know it happened a couple of days ago, even possibly a week or so ago. The guy saw him with a split lip and buffles hook about four or five days ago. So isn't this fantastic? What a great... Oh, she's going to yawn. Well, it looks like she might get up. And if she gets up, he's definitely going to be following her again. Now, we do know how incredibly... Oh, next yawn. Oh, waking up lines. And when you yawn, you can actually see the condensation coming out from their mouths. That's how cold it is this morning. Now, Justin's wondering, will that lip heal due to the enzymes in his mouth? Oh, big yawn. So it'll be interesting to watch her behavior, see if she tries to get away from him. Um, to see whether oh, she maybe got cubs and he's just getting a little bit uh, confused signals from her hormone levels. Now, speaking about that mouth, Justin, let's have a look here quickly. We can see... We can see that, that scar, or that, that fresh cut, I'm just going to, hopefully there should be enough shade. There we go. You can see it quite clearly there. A split there. It doesn't look that bad, and I, I do think it'll heal uh, relatively quickly. Um, let's have a look if we can see. Oh, bless you. Lion sleezing next to me. You can see it's, a, it's not that big. Of course having to use your mouth for lots of different things as a lion, particularly eating and fighting, it might take a little bit longer, but I don't think that's going to be a major, a major, major long-term injury, but it will give us a really nice way to identify him, uh, a very distinct little cut in his left lip. And I must say, I'm quite happy we found them very early. It means not too much driving around in the freezing cold. We can sit and bask in the sun like the lions.
Now, Elaine Cole's wondering about lions when they lose their cubs. Will they immediately go into estrus? Uh, Elaine, normally within a week they will be in estrus after losing their cubs. They're genetically programmed like that and, and they have a very short gestation period, uh, just over three months, uh, between 90 and 100 days. And therefore, if they do lose cubs, they can quickly get sort of back on the bandwagon and produce the next set of cubs. Now, one of the reasons for this very short and quick gestation period would, is probably uh, because male lion coalitions or male lions don't spend too much time at the top. It's very seldom that they will spend sort of more than four years as the sort of kings of a, of a territory. And, oh, isn't she beautiful? And that means that they need to get those cubs up to an, a, an adult age. The female must be... <laughs> you silly, silly lion. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> Look at him, he still looks so confused. <laughs> a, a dove landed literally just above his head and he got the biggest fight. <laughs> King of the beasts. And now male lions um, can be quite... Oh, here we go. I'm going to try and keep up with them so we're in the right spot when they're mates. No, don't go that way. Oh. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, look at that. It's never very long. Wasn't that spectacular? So, as incredible as these Mating pair. I just, I just need to speak on the radio for a second. Herbie, Herbie, you're trying to call me. I've just heard, I'm just trying to... Listen what's going on. There sounds like there could be some action close by. Of course, when I'm looking for a fast update, the radio is very busy. Herbie, Herbie. Okay, copy, thanks. Are there any other stations interested in that position, uh, apart from Jamie? Very exciting. 
exciting stuff. Just give me a second. Okay, copy. Um, I'm going to start making my way towards there, and I think Jamie is as well. Uh, if there are other vehicles that want to come in, one of us will move out. So, the rest of the Inkuma Pride are busy stalking Buffalo just down the road. So, I don't think these guys are going to move too far. Uh, Orbs, I'm coming from a retailer access. Uh, around the gate. I'll, I can pick up William for you. So the rest of the pride are stalking buffalo right next to camp. So I don't think these guys are going to move too much. So we're going to try. It seems like everyone... Um, <laughs> I just heard Jamie, while she's busy trying to uh, Peter's trying to fix the vehicle. The lines have just walked past them. So it seems like every time Peter tries to fix Rusty, I think it was Rusty last time. No, it was Wendy. Um, the first, we had, he had elephants, and now this time he's got lions walking past him. So we're going to try to get there while they're following. Apparently there's a big herd of buffalo. Now this can be really, really exciting. Uh, lots of pandemonium dust growling lions chasing buffalo, buffalo chasing lions. Uh, so what a start to the sunrise safari. Now, the reason we're both going there is we want to try to get two vehicles in there because when lions are hunting big herds of buffalo, it's quite difficult to always be in the right spot. But with two of us, we double our chances. Oh, I'm moving fast again. It's quite cold again. Remember, we're about to go. We've just watched lions mating live, and we're about to go follow lions hunting buffalo live in the middle of Africa. We're on Juma Private Game Reserve, which is part of the Sabi Sands, which is part of the Greater Kruger, which is part of the Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park, which is eight and a half million acres of unfenced wilderness uh, where the animals can roam free and live their lives. And we're lucky enough to follow them on a daily basis on this live safari, uh, seeing little snippets into the secret lives of all these incredible creatures out here in Africa. I wear my gloves. Oh, I'm too excited. Let's, I'm not going to worry about putting on gloves. Let's get to lions hunting buffalo. Uh, Natasha in Ontario is wondering, what is my favorite thing about lions? Oh, that's a very difficult question, Natasha. Uh, because quite often lions are one of the less interesting animals to see in the bush because they sleep so much. But I think when they are active, there's very little can, that can beat the action that they give, whether they're mating or whether they're hunting. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I can't, let me think, what is my favorite thing about lions? I love their roars. Uh, mm. I would say it's the, it's the raw power, and if you're ever lucky enough to get to see them hunting, especially things like buffalo, hippo, and even elephant, uh, it's that raw power that they exude, and those muscles that ripple, I'd say is probably my favorite thing about lions. Wow, lions everywhere today. There's three female lions in Torchwood as well. Those must be either Styx, Talamati, or even possibly um, they, uh, Torchwood Pride. <laughs> okay. We're here now. They're the buffalo. 
Now those, they're the lions. Okay, I'm just going to, I think I'm going to go around the other way. So we've got buffalo right here. If we look on our right. So there they are. Buffaloes, buffaloes, buffaloes. And not more than 50 meters away watching them. Oh, I didn't even see her. <laughs> uh, let me rephrase that. Not more than 30 meters away. I was looking at the other lions. There she is. That looks like amber eyes. Now, I can't see. This looks like a group of Duggar boys. It's a big old buffalo bull. They're going to be watching to see if there's any one that's probably got limp or showing a bit more weakness. Now, three lionesses, it is possible for them to catch a big buffalo bull like this. And especially now that we're in a drought, they might be not on the tip-top condition. So I want to ask Herbie something. Herbert, Herbert. Herbie, where's the Shambi of Nyari? Or is it just these dagger boys? Copy, thanks. Oh, the cubs, the cubs. Now, they're obviously spending time with the pride at the moment. And just make them up through the trees. Now, of course, if a buffalo happen to smell those cubs they would try trample them so you'll probably find the cubs will stay probably really close to where we are if the lionesses do decide to have a full go at the buffalo A comment from Jamie who is saying, watching the lions, she's watching them down this fire break all the way from camp. Okay, here we go. While Peter battles the grim and look, she's just changed her body stature. Um, Cubs, you're going to get into trouble, little guys. Look at that. Look at that. She's changed. She's obviously picked up on something. I'm just going to move back a little bit and I'm going to put ourselves in a position where we might be able to see a lot of what happens. There's another lioness, so that's one, two, three that we can see. There could be four of them here. Now, if there are four of them, that could really increase their chances. Now, what I'm doing is I'm putting myself in a position where I think the buffalo are going to run. Uh, now, when it comes to following hunting big cats, uh, having a little bit of cat intuition and putting yourself in the right place is, is the best way to see what's actually going down. So it's great being behind the lines and that's why I wish Jamie's car was working because if we could put two vehicles into this, it'd be incredible because um, we'd position ourselves so we've got two dis different views but hopefully those gremlins are fixed shortly. Now I'm just going to sneak until I can see the lioness. I'm just checking. Also, I'm doing my own cat appraisal of the buffalo, seeing if I can see any weaknesses. So I'm thinking like a lion at the moment. So I'm saying, is there one with a limp? Is there maybe a slightly younger bull who's been left behind, who might be a little bit easier to catch?
cat. So I'm just going to stand by here. Now, look, 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 look. She's, she's coming towards them. Now, we know there's another lioness below that we can't see. This is Amber Eyes. Oh, um, okay, just, you got it? Oh, oh no, don't go for the one behind us. So she's assessing who's going to be the weakest. And this might take a while. They might follow them for f half an hour, 40 minutes. Now there's almost no wind. And these are the buffalo bulls that we see around the Juma Pan. So that buffalo is a little bit separated from the others. It's also the closest to the lioness at the moment. Although he is a very big boy. He is looking quite old, a little bit stiff in the legs, but no obvious signs of massive weakness. And of course, this is a formidable animal. Uh, a big lioness weighs probably 300 pounds or so. A big buffalo weighs over 1,600 pounds. So here we go. They're slowly moving off grazing. I'm just watching where the lioness is and I'm just going to... Okay, I'm just watching the lions carefully. So we know there's a lioness down, down here. I saw across the road probably 50, 60 meters away from where this line is closest to us is. So it might be looping around this side, trying to push the lions back onto the other two or three lioness, I mean the buffalo, onto the other two or three li uh, lions. Oh, she's on the move again. Now, when hunting buffalo, particularly buffalo bulls like this, you can see they're not as stealthy as they would be for a smaller prey. They know they can outrun them. A buffalo quite often use defense. Oh, I wish I knew where the other lioness is. Boom, sit down again. Wait for the right moment. So I've only seen three adult lionesses. That doesn't mean there isn't a fourth. That could be sneaking around where I can't see her. Eh? Oh, well, there are four lionesses. Okay, so I've, I now account for four lionesses. So their odds just went up by a quarter. So at the moment, there's one lioness somewhere down there. And there's three behind us. Oh. One almost opposite us and two behind that. There she is. Next lioness is coming to join her. Next adult lioness. I'm keeping my eyes peeled to the sort of east of us just in case there's another one there. Now, Greg in Michigan is wondering, do the buffalo know or sense that the lions are near? Not yet. They have no idea, Greg. 
Now you see how she's looking to the east. Um, she's looking for the fourth lioness. I'm trying to see where she was looking, seeing if I can just spot the other lioness stalking. Now they might prefer a little bit of a thicker area, uh, but it won't stop them chasing them in the open. This is very, very exciting. Now, of course I love wild dogs, but watching lions hunt buffalo is, is an incredible thing there. And lions aren't the most successful hunters. They only succeed about 1.5 times out of 10. Oh, lions on the move again. So let's hope they tried to catch things eight times last night. And the Inkahumas are very proficient buffalo hunters. It is one of their favorite things to catch. And I mean, that buffalo bull they caught on Arethusa about a week, week or two ago was absolutely massive. And they did that without the aid of any males. There are one female down who's with that male near, uh, near Sydney's waterhole. Okay, third lioness and the cubs coming. Now at some point, mom is going to give those little cubs an order, which means sit tight, little monsters. Oh, <laughs> the moment the little guys are still trying to play, they're pretending mom's legs are buffalo. Amber's up. Two lionesses have headed a little bit further to the east. Now the buffalo, as they're feeding, are becoming more and more spread out. Sean in Secunda is wondering how good is a buffalo's eyesight. It is quite good, William. It's not excellent, but it is very, very, reason very reasonably good, I suppose, I think. Now, they're keeping on, and I just want to keep up with the lead lioness at the moment. Now, remember, there's a fourth one that I can't see somewhere. And there's a buffalo that's all by itself. But they haven't seen it yet. One, two, three. I wonder where that fourth lioness is. Oh, they're looking like they're becoming a little more serious. The buffalo all have their backs to them. Oh, they've spotted the lone buffalo. Look at that, look at that. So there's one buffalo that's a little bit further away from the rest.
Yeah, they're going for it. I'm just going to get us on the other side of this termite mound. Oh, but he's facing the wrong way. There's actually two of them there. don't think the buffalo have spotted them. There's a buffalo just to our right. And this looks like Amber leading the charge. Oh, she is such a beautiful lioness. Yeah, it is Amber. Hello, gorgeous. Wow. Oh, you are such a stunning girl. Now, exciting news. Jamie is up and running and going to be joining us in this lion buffalo hunt. There's a buffalo 15 meters away. Look at her, look at her, look at her go. Right there, right there. Jamie, Jamie. Jamie, go into the middle road from through quarantine and then cut past that big marula to the western junction. You'll see the buffalo there and you should see our visual. I think being ahead of us uh, where they might chase them is a good idea. Gonna go forward a little bit. We got the two lionesses coming behind us. going to get ourselves again into a position where I think the action is going to take place. Jamie, just cut straight across quarantine to the western edge. Okay, so that thicket there is where the lioness is. Jamie, don't bother going all the way around. Just cut straight across the open area to western edge. So I'm just letting Jamie know exactly where we are. So at Western Edge Quarantine Track and the track that runs to Zoe's, uh, the buffalo are moving towards that track that runs to Zoe's and the lions are still on the track that runs back to Access. AFM. Okay, exciting stuff. It looks like we are going to get two vehicles into the sighting. And oh, there we go, behind us, it's the lioness and cubs. I still think this is a big game. The cubbies, can't see them there. Okay, they, they are coming closer to us.
information. All right, just zoom, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk you in. And a little bit lower. There we go. Now the buffalo are heading to a slightly thicker area that might suit the lines a bit more. Let me move forward a little bit, maybe. So I'm putting Jamie on the other side of the buffalo. Look, at, isn't that just exquisite? Buffalo still have no idea she's here. going to use that termite mound. I'm just going to get us past this little bush. Oh, they spotted her. Or smelt her. Some of them did. She's still very, very close to one buffalo who hasn't smelt her. I think the wind's just changed. I'm just going to... Taking us through a bit of a tricky spot, yeah? Now, with lions hunting buffalo, they're actually not too worried once they've initially been spotted because they know they can just keep on them. Okay, let's have a look what's happening here. So, the last visual I had of that in Kahuma Lioness was going behind this termite mound. And that buffalo thinks it's seen something, but it's not sure yet. Maybe he smelt something. Maybe the wind's changed slightly. I think the cubs are what gave it away. Okay, so we're going to sit here while we sit here and try to figure out what's going on. Let's go to Jamie so she can say good morning to you. Good morning and welcome on this really exciting sunrise safari. Quick introduction, my name is Jamie. I have Dave on camera with me and we've got lions hunting. So we have gone around to the other side, the direction that the buffalo bulls are moving in. And I have to tell you something. Watching this play out from camp has been quite stressful, hasn't it, Dave? Yeah. It has been a little bit stressful. As we've been waiting, luckily Peter Bratt, as always, proving to be incredible. And he has managed to fix Rusty, get her up and running again. And we are out here with two cameras to watch as this saga plays out. This is an incredible herd of buffalo bulls. We actually... On our way back to camp, when we realized that we would not be able to broadcast this morning, on our way back to camp I stopped and remarked upon it, pointed them out to Dave, the fact that it was such a huge herd of buffalo bulls. And believe it or not, on this very exciting morning we were actually tracking some Dile when, when everything changed. And this whole morning has most definitely not gone according to plan. We've got some space here. And Brent has moved a little bit further, so we're going to move as well. I'm going to try and get us just on the other side of the buffalo. Bear with me a moment. What an incredible morning! There's just stuff happening absolutely everywhere. Okay, where's Brent? There, Brent is through the trees over there. There's a trotting buffalo. There's some buffalo running. Down this way, I think it's just skittish because they've smelled lions, but they don't know exactly where they are. 
Ooh, lion's roaring. Oh, what a stunning winter's morning. There's a lion roaring off in the distance. Is it a male coming to give them a hand? Has he been distracted from his lady friend in order to head in this direction? Because if it is, it sounds like a male's roar. If it is a male, the game has changed completely. Because with just the three females also trying to protect the cubs and keep them out of harm's way, things become a little bit more tricky. But if you throw a male lion into the mix, you have got something completely extraordinary. An extra 200 odd pounds of animal and that's just on top of the normal lion weight but that's how much heavier he is I've got to hope that he is well we're gonna see if he is on his way to give the Unkohuma ladies a hand we're gonna reposition to put ourselves in the best possible spot while we do Brent has got visual of that lioness yes. now the wind changed those buffalo that trotted off saw them. Now she's standing where the buffalo can see them, but there's an impala who hasn't seen them. And I told Jamie she can come here. They're heading back to the north. Well, she's not confused. One lioness in front of us is stalking impala. One lioness behind us is still interested in buffalo. Don't know where to look. Which we are on the one in front of us now. I suppose it's always better to catch an un unexpecting prey than an expecting prey. We can't see the impala. I just saw it walk past in the direction she's looking. Um, just come in slightly to the west of me. Oh, there we go. I can just see the impala. There's buffalo still here, but they've seen her. But sometimes when they're hunting buffalo, they don't mind being seen. Uh, negative, they're, they're still stalking. Oh, and the cubs might just ruin it. They've just jumped onto the lioness who was stalking in front of us. Oh, I think I think it might be might be game up. Thanks to the cubs. I don't think the impala spotted them, but it is quite far away and her concentration seemed to be broken by the lion cubs. And Jamie's coming, I'm just showing her where the lions are. Let me just call it. Jamie, if you come in in front of me, that's uh, where the cubs are with the female lying down. Now, old amber eyes still seem set on buffalo. Now she could spend the whole day watching these buffalo. Oopsie, and my radio. I'm just gonna... Now the buffalo are supremely aware she's here. The wind has changed blowing straight towards them and she's been spotted. So I'll just give you an idea of what she's doing. How's that? So you can see her here and then the buffalo just directly in front of her. So, so there she is and if we look up a little bit, there's the buffalo. So while we sit here with Amber and her staring of 
down of the buffalo bull, Jamie's moved around to the other side where the delectable little monsters are playing with one of the lionesses. <laughs> it's a tough job being a lioness with three rambunctious little cubs. <laughs> because hunting becomes that much more difficult when you've got three little ones that haven't quite grasped the basics of it. We've just got two of them here having an absolutely wonderful game watched over by, I don't actually think mom in this case, but I'm not 100% sure, I, can't, I haven't had a close enough look at her, but they've been having an absolute ball, look at them. I think Brent is right, they are the delectable little monsters. They will forever be known as the delectable little monsters. Oh, what have we got? Yay, buffalo dung. Yummy, what a good way to start a morning. <laughs> it's my buffalo dung. Oh, well, we've each got a pile of buffalo dung. Oh. <laughs> Put in place. It's amazing to watch these enormous cats with all of their power and strength being so completely gentle with the little ones of the pride. It's incredible to see. The third cub, just in case you're wondering, is off to the right of the other two and they're about to go, the little one's about to go stalk it. Here we go. Reunited once again. Uh, Already these three little monsters have wrecked at least one hunting attempt. Helen, you wanted to know why they have the cubs with them when they go hunting. And the answer is it's just the age that they're getting to. They have to learn at some point through observation. What they'll do is they will, at this point, most, most of the time, they will be accompanying the pride whenever they go out hunting. And you, what happens when they get a little bit older is they will learn to fall back and let the lionesses stalk forward but for now they're just a little bit young and they don't really understand exactly what's expected of them that looks like the male to me on the bottom just a very brief oh I've got your toe I've got your toe <laughs> oh smack on the bottom And Heather, on the subject of our little ones growing up, yes, the little cubs will feed off the kill at this point. Now, it's not like a wild dog society, a pack, where the babies come first. In the lion world, it's a rough and tumble and tough place, and they'll have to wait their turn before they get to nibble on any parts of the carcass, wait until the adults have eaten their full. bowled over by one of the lionesses. She's a new, she's a mother, but I'm not sure if she's their mother that was swatting them about like that. <laughs> Are you having fun there, Dave? Probably yes. <laughs> How cool is this? Ha, got you. <laughs> Practicing. That looks like a boy to me, doesn't it? Couldn't quite see properly. I'll leave it up to you guys with all of your screenshots. I think we might have a male and two females. But see if you can't screenshot and we can come to a better conclusion. They're rather tricky to tell at this point. Oh, what's happening? What's happening? Huh? This is a very exciting morning. <laughs> yes, if only you knew how frustrated your mothers, your mother and aunts must be with you. Oh. Take down. Got you. Caught you. Caught you. I'm going to now exert the stranglehold. No, no, okay, you're getting up. Right, now we're going to take you down again. <laughs> it's amazing. That instinct is there, even if they're just practicing it on mom. <laughs> Get him. Oh, this is so cool. The other lionesses have moved off, and she's trying, I think they're moving on to go and hunt, and Brent is with them now. 
but she's trying to keep the little ones back a bit from the whole proceeding. Probably with a great deal of frustration. Mommy, wait for me. <laughs> Galloping off after her. Right, now we really are spoiled, aren't we? We've got, <laughs> got a full-blown lion hunt happening here. <laughs> Just in, in miniature version. Let's go reposition quickly. Lion cubs and hunting lions. This is getting ridiculous, verging upon ridiculous at this point. But this is what we were so looking forward to. So, okay, little one. Oh, you're so tired. I'm just going to stop here. Let the baby catch up with mum. Oh, what have you found? What have you found? Oh, careful. That stick bites. Yes, you three. This is basically the lion equivalent of taking your three toddlers sh grocery shopping with you. It's that sort of level of frustration. I, that's, I mean, not that I've ever taken three toddlers grocery shopping, but that's how I imagine it. We, we are sort of making light of the whole situation, but there is a danger to these cubs in a buffalo hunt. And Brock, you wanted to know what the sort of chances are that a buffalo might charge the cubs. It happens. It does happen. I couldn't give you an exact percentage, but I can tell you that cubs do get killed in buffalo hunts, and they do even get killed if buffalo locate the den site. So there's always that possibility terms of the risk to the little cubs and this is where you know in the initial stages where they're hidden away in the drainage line systems the chances of them being found are relatively slim but now when they're actively out with the adults while the adults are trying to hunt it does become very dangerous of course the last thing the adults want is to put their youngsters at risk so they've got to coordinate their hunting so that the chase rather than bringing them back, the, sort of herding the buffalo back towards the rest of the pride, they've got to make sure that they keep the buffalo away from the little ones. We'll stop here. They're going into some very dense vegetation, or they're about to, as have, because the, that's where the buffalo have gone. So life is about to get a bit more tricky. So ridiculously cute. You know, they've got us all wrapped around their little fingers or toes, in this case. Okay. All right, over to Brent, who's got a better view than we do. The buffalo have possibly given up their one advantage, and that was the open areas. Now, of course, they're massively big animals. The lions are all directly behind them. I can just catch their movement every now and then through the bush behind the buffalo. They seem to be walking away directly behind the buffalo. They might be heading down towards the little river system. And there you can see the movement. There's a cub running past. So it is going to be quite difficult for us to stay with them, but this is a better hunting area for the Inkahumas. Lots of thick bush, good cover. And the buffalo know the lions are around. Now this is a, an age-old scenario that's playing out here. Okay, I've got one lioness through this gap and 40 meters from the buffalo. There's another lioness over there. We can't really see them through the thickets. 
I think let's just stick on the buffalo for now. And I'm going to watch the lions because we're not going to get a good visual of them. So if they burst out, it's going to be on that buffalo. Okay. Unless there's another buffalo. I can't see a bit closer. Oh, here we go. Here we go, there we go, there we go. They're splitting. Just watch what's going on. So I know there's that lioness you're looking at. Last I saw, there's another one probably 30 meters to her left and another one 30 meters to the left of that. Here we go, here we go. Right in front of us, there's a buffalo running. Now the lions are going to start testing them. Oh, that dugger boy thought the other dugger boy wanted to fight. Now, Obviously, that buffalo just saw a lioness. They can see this lioness that's next to us, but we're going to stay on the buffalo because I don't know where the other lionesses are. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to say just there. Oh, where's my finger? There, there's a lion running around to the other side of them. Um, let's stick, stick a little bit wide. So, okay, let's come there. Now, of course, it's quite thick. This lioness is coming right up. She's going to walk into shot shortly. Just stay a little bit wide. Stay there. There she is. See, now the buffalo definitely knows she's there. So what the lion's doing now, they're testing. Now, here we go. Here we go. Now, there's lots of buffalo there, so they're just testing. They're trying to find... Oh, there we go. She's being chased now. Uh, Jamie, just come in where I am. Okay. So that's the thing. You've got to really think about where you're positioning yourself. And I said, we're not going to get the best visuals in this block. Now the buffalo are walking actually towards the lions. Look, there's another lioness. She just popped up next to us. Now, the buffalo haven't seen this lioness. So as they chase one lion, they might get, this lioness might get behind them. Oh, look, 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 this buffalo might chase this lioness. He's just spotted. So this is really like a game of chess now. The... The buffalo, or the lions are testing the buffalo, seeing how strong their defenses are, and the buffalo are defending. And as I said, this can take quite a while. Now, we only got visual of the one lioness who's walking through there somewhere. There she is. those buffalo the buffalo are sort of trailing her and to a degree that might be a bit of a strategy because we don't know where the other lions are divide and conquer okay let's move forward a bit so the lions are testing seeing if there's a buffalo bull with a bit of weakness seeing if there's one who runs and gets separated from the rest of them Gotta concentrate now. I'm gonna chat to Jamie quickly. Now, you never know the lionesses might drop in front here. There's a little river system. You see some of the buffalo are just starting to oops, sorry, my head. Um, starting to feed again. <laughs> and 
this they've probably had run-ins with lions twice a week for the majority of their life and most of the time the buffalo succeed Jamie do you have visual of any of the ngala your side this, this old boy was sitting next to the pan all day copy Okay, so we've lost a few of the lines. They might come up from behind the buffalo again. I know. Last visual I had was just beyond those buffalo. Now what they're trying to do is put the buffalo into a run, turn them around. Get those sharp horns out of the way and uh, try to get their soft backsides as a, as a target. Now, it sounds like they've taken the cubs down there into uh, the little river system there. So even if the buffalo come, there should be a little gully where they can hide. Now, that buffalo over there seems to be staring quite intently into the bush. So there could be a lion there. Now, that's the last place I saw a lioness disappear. Where are you, kitty cats? Where are you? This is the first time in a while we've managed to account for all five Nkuma lionesses. Four here and one mating near Sydney's waterhole. Let's, let's see, he's turned his back now and I just want to check carefully if that's not what the lions are waiting for. Sorry, head. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to peer around, see what I can see. Now, for an animal that's being hunted, these buffalo don't look too perturbed, do they? Um, as I said, they're quite good at defending against lions. Now, if there had been a male lion here, it'd be a bit of a different story. But I think he's preoccupied. Let's just go deeper in here a little bit, see if we can see anything. Try to figure out what's going on. Now, of course, the lions might abandon this hunt till this evening. So the last place I saw a lion was around here. Jamie's checking a little bit further to the northwest. Now you can see the lions don't mind being seen when they're hunting buffalo quite often. It's part of the strategy um, to see which one might panic. Now you can see this area I was talking about a good place to for the cubs to stay if they are hunting seriously. Um, very thick, very steep. Ah, oh, there are the lions. Uh, now getting there is a different story. Looks like they've decided to take a break. And we'll try to get in there, but I think Jamie's got the better camera for the job. So I'm just going to establish the site and then I might let Jamie go in there because uh, they've got the camera with the super zoom. Jamie, I've got a visual of them. They're all sleeping in the drainage line. I'm going to try to get in, but I think it's going to be better with your camera. So I'm just going to try to find a way in. There might even possibly be not a good way in. Looking at, this is a, quite a thick area.
That's lots of thorns on that one. I see what's going on. I can see one lioness. I saw the cubs right in front of me, but they're just too deep for me to see. Uh, I can see some other movement. Oh. Jamie, sorry, I think maybe do go to the other side. I've just got up and started moving. And there's no way to cross here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and watch them for as long as possible. And Jamie's going to try to scoot around to the other side. Oh, there's a cub. Hello, little one. Why aren't you big and brave hunting buffalo? trying to see. Uh, they seem to have headed almost due south. Can you hear the cubs calling? Ow! Ow! Wait for me! Wait for me! <laughs> so I'm going to try watch exactly where they are. As Jamie's trying to get around. As you can see, it's quite a steep drop off here. Okay, we're going to do the same. We're going to try to go around, but we're going to try to go east to get around. Now, I think getting in here was, is going to be easier than getting out. Jamie, Jamie. Um, from my last vehicle position, there's a jackalberry, a tallish jackalberry in the in the, the river system. They're heading straight, sort of southwest from there. Copy. Okay. Jamie's going to try get in from the west. We're going to try from the east. Are we behind us? Lots of thorns around here. Okay, so while we try to get out of this difficult spot, uh, let's go see how Jamie's attempt to get around is going. Well, we're in an equally difficult spot, to be 100% honest with you. Sure, but we could actually beach ourselves here. Come on, come on, Rusty. Come on, Rusty. Come on, Rusty. Up. There we go. And we're trying to follow up from the opposite end. Unfortunately, I don't know exactly where Brent had them. He said there's a tallish jackalberry tree, but to be honest, everything, everything's a bit, pretty much the same height from where I am. And I don't know exactly where he last had them, so we're stuck here too, trying to figure out exactly where to go. And I think I have led us astray, Dave. Um, sure, I don't know where to go. I have absolutely no idea where those lines actually are. We've managed to cross here, but we found ourselves in equal trouble. Okay, let's do this again. Come on, rest. There we go. And up the other side. 
Right. I think... I don't actually know where to go from here. I'm trying to work out which is the best way. I'm just going to contact Brent. Ah. I was going to ask Brent where um, he thinks I should cross, but that's not going to help either because he's currently stuck himself. Now, I know where Brent is. <laughs> I know vaguely where the lines are. <laughs> but I think perhaps the western edge of quarantine, I think it's the only way to do this. Ah, uh, what a pity! Too many river systems making life difficult. I think friends said they were going southwest. That's my only problem with going all the way back east. In case they pop out here somewhere. This is one of the most difficult areas on Juma in terms of trying to keep track of the animals. We should try and find the buffalo. They might be able... Well, that's where the lions will be heading to. Alright, let's try this again with feeling. either. Might even be better to go back to Zoe's road. I wish I'd seen them. If I'd seen them, if I'd known exactly which way they were going, it would be a lot easier to calculate where they're going to spot out. Pop out. Not spot out. Jackalberry in here that I think has a crossing point. It's one of Karula's favorite spots. We should be able to get in here. Let's try it. Yeah, this is it. There's a crossing point, or there was a crossing point somewhere here. Amazing how you get to know an area. There's a buffalo. Amazing how you get to know an area and all of the places where you can actually get a vehicle in and across the river systems. Hello, buffalo. Let's just check really carefully around here. The lions are planning a different approach to things. It's quite a big stump there. ourselves a view, we're about to have a view of the, the way that the whole herd of buffalo is spread out now, which is definitely for the lions going to work to their advantage. And we've got some buffalo off to our right, let's just stop and look here quickly. We've got some buffalo off to our right. Oh, that's a tree. <laughs> There's some buffalo behind it. And then we've got, actually got some straight ahead of us as well. I can hear Brent. Okay, let's get to this crossing point, everybody. Let's see if we can't figure out. Oh, sorry, Rusty. That's not good. Okay, that's okay. The brakes are gone. That's all right, we can drive without brakes. You ready for this, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Brakes have just uh, the brake line's just been hooked on a branch, and the brakes are gone. The buffalo are all standing here, looking confused. I would stop, but I can't. Oh, there we go. There's Brent. <laughs> a 
Okay. Cool. Hmm. Oh, goodness. Okay. With no brakes, we're just going to have to do this, Dave, and you're just going to have to watch out. Here we go. This is fun, isn't it? Oh, this is definitely a good way to spend one's morning. Especially without brakes. It's just that little additional test of skill that everybody needs once or twice during the, the average Tuesday morning. Okay, this is the crossing point. To flock on. Brakes non-existent, so that doesn't really matter either way. This VR rig is going to get... Um, let's, try, let's do it this way then. I don't want to smash the VR rig either. Again. Come on, Rusty. Come on, Rusty. Come on, Rusty. Come on, Rusty. Hey! You legend. Now what? Thorns. Ow. I hope my earpiece is intact after that, because my arm certainly isn't. <laughs> I can't stop us going backwards, Dave. There's no brakes. Everybody duck. Well, the good news is Steph is still in town. So we can get the brake line fixed. Oh. Whew. We're through. How are you, Dave? All good. Are you all in one piece? How's final control? Are they still alive there? <laughs> yep, there they are. <laughs> okay, where are these where are these lions? <laughs> Standing by. A firm. Copy. Uh, just give me one more rev so I've got an exact position. Just give me a bit of a rev. Okay, copy, thanks. Okay, guys, Brent's got a flat. Uh, we've got no brakes. Hold on, Darby. We've got to get there fast because he can't. It's getting it's getting flat fast, and he's surrounded by lions. <laughs> oh, you know, day in the life of the Wild Earth team. Our antenna's bobbing away. Peter Bratz probably in final control with his head in his hands. Brent is a wall. All right, let's go across to Brent with his flat tire. I'm going to try and find him. Oh, and he might have found him. Let's go across to Brent anyway. So literally, as I got to the lions, one of the plugs in the tire popped out. I just heard it, pss, and I was about to say, oh, Rebecca, I'm ready for a link. And uh, then I noticed that my tire was getting more and more flat, so I had to try and get out of there as fast as possible. The lines are not far, but there's enough bush in between us that I should be able to change the tire safely. But I'm just going to explain to Jamie where to go. So, if you come behind me, and get to the edge of the, the, the drainage, cool. and then just follow it down there. 
You can see that jackalberry sticking out of the bush there. Yeah. They're directly opposite it. Uh, all lying in a pile. A pile of lions, yes. Not a pride, a pile. Um, they got they got a for a fright, or not a fright, they all lifted their heads when it my tire started leaking. So I'm gonna change my tire, I'm gonna leave you with these. I might go if I succeed in changing a tire and not being eaten. I, I might go back to the ones at Sydney's. Alright, Yes. Did you ever update the um male leopard fight. Yes, I was half listening. We we nearly got stuck coming through as well. Oh, well, let's just put in low range. Who needs brakes? Don't need brakes out in the bush. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to start changing my tyre. So while we do that, uh, let's go back to Jamie. <laughs> what would you guys rather watch? Would you rather watch the tyre changing exhibition? Or would you rather go see the lions? You will, of course, rather see the lions. Oh, no, stop. Stop, Rusty, stop. Sorry, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave you to it in a moment. I just have to try and get out of here. Somebody very inconsiderate put their car in an inconsiderate place. <laughs> if I drove any further, I don't think you can see how cool. I've, I've <laughs> it was a proper tsh. I've parked on the puncture. So it's one of these little things here that I'm going to show you that's popped out. So every time I turn, it goes pssst. <laughs> so I parked on it so it didn't go down as fast, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to get this sorted as fast as possible. Okay, well we'll, we'll leave you to it. Um, we'll spend it. I think your lights are on. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm going to have to come and pass and nearly clip you. Bye, enjoy the lines. <laughs> okay. You should go this way and follow the drainage. We'll yeah, find it. Cool. Head right. Or you can see my tracks and follow them. Just okay, cool. Perfect, thank you. Okay. <sighs> Isn't this fun? This is definitely the way every Tuesday morning should go. Darby, you convinced, aren't you? Uh, Good. Um, Brent's tire tracks are here. I'm just concentrating for now, so bear with me. What did I say to you, Dave, a moment ago about flat tires, that we were going to get one? Well, it wasn't us. Yet. Yet. Let's not get too cocky. Um, following Brent's tire tracks. Tire tracks in here. And then we go a little bit this way. Whoop. And now we go, you must be joking. <laughs> and Gary said, welcome to Wild Earth Demolition Derby, live on Juba. Fair enough, very, very much fair enough. Oh goodness, now Herbert wants to get hold of me. Standing by, oh, Derby. go guys well done Brent and everybody else concerned there is the pile of lions the pride of lions and just let me chat to Herbert one second and then we'll chat about these lions again oh well done Herbert um, we've just relocated these Mufazi Mungala and Bunt ones uh, where is that where is that Bamba Copy that, well done. Um, I'm still with Dizengala, and um, Brent has a flat tire. Oh, sorry everybody. I, I will try and concentrate in a moment. Bear with me, I'm going to be taking my earpiece out because I, my core body temperature has gone up by about 30 degrees from when I first started this morning. I don't know if Dave's feeling the same, 
The cubs are there, by the way, and I will reposition to get you a view of them. They're suckling, so all are safe and sound and not trampled by buffalo, which of course was our main concern. So just bear with me, earpiece is going out. Excite both exciting and exhausting for a Tuesday morning. It is most definitely, as Brent described it, a pile of lions. I, I think we've we've gone through that remarkably unscathed. Mm. I feel fine. An odd scratch, but nothing serious. No lost limbs. No flat tires that we know of yet. Yet. Okay, now if only my earpiece would decide to stay in, life would be a great deal easier. Okay, well as you can see, the action has slowly calmed down and our lionesses have given up the chase for now and have found themselves a restful spot in the shade. One, two, three and four, and then presumably the fifth Nkuhuma lioness mating with the Birmingham boy. This feels like the closest we've come to having all five back together in a really long time. And Carolyn, and to all the others, I suppose I should actually have explained this beforehand. Um, because Brent said if he doesn't get eaten then he'll see us at some point later. Um, Carolyn, no, Brent isn't in any danger. First of all, we are between him and the lions. They know he's there, and they are glancing up every now and again. That female's glancing in his direction. However, he's far enough away. We are here, number two. And number three, they, they will be fine with him during the day. If it were at night, things might be a little bit different, but he's still got the safety of the vehicle to jump back in if anything happens to come a-calling. But if you end up changing a tire at night, you just need to be a bit more vigilant with uh, checking around you and spotlighting around you, making sure that nothing is going to come your way. I can still hear his quiet tones off in the distance and the gentle creaking of the jack. So he is alive and well. And we've got all four lionesses here. So we, I mean, short of the other one coming back to surprise him, he'll be absolutely fine. We've all, all of us have had to do it at some stage or another, that change of attire in a... I've done it this distance from lions before. It wasn't pleasant. Um, I wouldn't do it again, especially not with a bottle jack. Nope, she's giving him a, a hairy eyeball. She is looking at Brent, but you don't need to worry. She just wants to know what he's up to and that he isn't a threat to them. And it's the young lioness as well. In fact, isn't that this... Yeah, it is the young lioness. Hey, girl. What's happening? Hmm? These silly humans up to their nonsense again. <laughs> the other has found a very comfortable pillow. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to... I actually don't know what I'm going to do, to be 100% honest with you. I don't quite see a better position that doesn't place us directly into the sun. And you just think where we'd be. Hmm. We can't go that way. And we can't really go backwards. And in fact, I'm not even entirely sure how we're going to get out of this at the end of the day. Right, let me show you the cubs at least. Let me let me try. You'll have to bear with me because Brent is currently occupied in changing a tire. Just bear with me one moment as we scuffle round and just see whether or not the view is any better from a different angle. Otherwise, we'll just return to that view because it's not a bad view at all. As you can see, my beanie has decided to do its usual thing as well. My, I found my cap, by the way, as we reposition, but not my beanie. My beanie is missing for the moment, which is terrib terribly sad. Must be somewhere. Brent swears blind it's not in his vehicle. Oh, hello, monster. Which way are you going? Oh. How's your view there, Dave? Pretty, pretty okay. Not fantastic. There's a little cub. Tired of feeding, tired of playing. It's gone to go to sleep with mom. 
and all of the lions, I think, and the exertions of the morning have taken their toll. And they are sleeping. Jeepers, that was a quick tire change. How impressive was that? Brent is up, running, and off. And one lioness is repositioning. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Michael, you've asked a question that I have absolutely no idea what the answer is. Um, Michael wants to know if the youngest lioness is the daughter of the mother of these cubs or if they have a different mother. I have to be completely honest with you, I think they have a different mother. They, the mother of these cubs is quite young. Um, pardon? That's how I got a cub visual. Okay, I think this is about as good as it's going to get actually. So Michael, I don't know 100, with 100% certainty, but I'm relatively certain that it's not the same mother. There was a stage where the young lioness, when she had her sister, when the Birmingham boys took over and the, she had a sister, twin sister, and they were around sub-adult age, they disappeared off with the oldest lioness in the Unkahuma Pride. And I think that she might be the mother, but honestly, I really don't know. I suspect that might be the case, though. In which case, that makes her the aunt of the little ones. She's probably a sister of the mother from a different litter, so a younger sister. I'm just listening to the update from Herbert. So what Herbert has discovered this morning, remember how I said we were following the tracks for Sindile? Well, it looks as though he moved into the block. He might have made a kill. However, there is evidence from the tracks that there was a scrap between two male leopards. We don't know if it's Sindile, obviously, for certain. We know from Herbert's tracking skills that there was a kill made, two male leopards encountered each other, they fought, and one went east, the other stayed the victor around the kill. Beyond that, we do not know anything more, we don't know who it was exactly. The tracks that I saw today, that I feel are small enough to be Sindile's, but I can't say that with absolute certainty. But as with most leopard fights, it's probably resulted in a couple of scratches, cuts, and bruised egos, and nothing more. But we'll discuss that at a different time. Now, I haven't, obviously wasn't here for most of the hunting, but I can imagine somehow that Amber Eyes played a huge role in initiating it. She always seems to. And Rich, lioness prides don't necessarily have a key animal that initiates the hunt. They are often led by the older females, but there's no dominance hierarchy within them. Uh, the females seem to decide as a group when to go, but it's often the older females that take the lead. So Rich, it's not a, it's not a, a case of a leader, it's just a case of experience trumping the rest of the individuals in the pride. Where was I going? What was I going to say on that note? Uh, on that note, with the Inkahumas, we so often see amber eyes pushing forward and hunting regularly. But the, the hunts initiated isn't necessarily, it's often initiated by the hungriest member of the pride, or can be, I've noticed this just from pure observation, this isn't something that you'll find in any textbook, but in, from pure observation, when a lioness is about two, two and a half years old, or a male lion, they, they often push for hunts more than they might otherwise. So they, they sort of constantly, it's almost like they want to practice their hunting skills, or they've just caught on to the whole idea of hunting properly and they, they really want to keep trying and working on it. And I have noticed that with the young lioness of the Nkuma Pride as well. 
it's Molly's getting a little bit of a wash. I've definitely seen two lionesses with suckle marks here. However, the other lioness is Amber Eyes. We know that she, if she is pregnant, she's in early stages of pregnancy. And the young Nkuhuma lioness has only just recently been mating. She's a little bit young to be in late stages of pregnancy. And then we've got one Nkuhuma missing, mating with a Birmingham boy. Therefore, unless, it's one of the, unless that mating lioness has come and joined this group, therefore we have only got two sets of Nkuhuma cubs. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that my logic seems to make sense. We've got one mating. We've had amber eyes mating recently. We've got the young Nkuhuma female also mating recently, both of which are here. And we, that, that only leaves two new mothers, mathematically. There's only five lionesses in the Nkuhuma pride. So perhaps we were wrong about there being a third set of cubs. That makes sense, doesn't it? Have I, have I made a mistake? No, I haven't. No, that's not to say that Amber Eyes and the young lioness are not pregnant. They're just, they haven't had cubs. They might be pregnant now, but it'll be early stages. Lioness is thoroughly feeling terribly relaxed now. No successful food hunting. It does leave us with the somewhat tricky point of can we get you a better view? But I don't think we can, unfortunately. I think we are pretty much stuck where we are. And I'm just I'm thinking about the phone call that I'm going to make as soon as driver's finished to say, Steph, Steph, I ripped a brake line out. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be understanding. Dave, do we have any flat tires? No. Good, nice one. No, we seem to be absolutely fine. Bravo. That, by the way, has nothing to do with my driving skill and everything to do with the fact that Rusty's tires are slightly more resilient than the tires of Wendy. So poor Brent, his flat was almost inevitable. Unfortunately, our lionesses haven't presented a very good view of their faces at the moment, because if they had, it would have provided us with a lovely opportunity to answer Anita's question. Now, Anita, you want to know how you age a lioness. The, the best way, the most accurate way, is to look at the condition of their teeth, the state of their canines and their teeth in general, um, and the degree of yellowing that has occurred, and that, if you... There's some really nice charts available on the internet where you can actually have a look at the different ages and the way that they age. It's much more difficult with a lioness because they don't have manes. Um, for the first few years of a male lion's life, it's actually quite nice to be able to guess at the age just at a glance if you obviously are not in the position to open their mouths and examine their canines, which you generally aren't. Um, to have a look at their manes is quite a nice way. But obviously that doesn't work with lionesses. The overall animal, as they start to age, they start to get a, good, a bit scraggly. There is another technique that is not as, it's not reliable. So, in general, as a general rule, lionesses' noses darken with age. However, there are cases, many cases, of lionesses with pink noses at 13 years old. So that's not a, it's not a foolproof, me foolproof method. But it does, it, it's like giraffe. Giraffe generally darken with age, just in the same way, but they don't always. And there's always a genetic aspect to that. So your best way is to just examine their teeth nice and closely. Which, of course, is not always all that easy to do. I mean, you're welcome to go and ask the Uncle lionesses to open wide. You might just need to screenshot them as they yawn, and it'll give you an idea of their age. But in general, 
the, pe the nose color does give you a rough indication. You've just got to be very, very careful of jumping to conclusions with it. I just so wish I could get you a view of these cubs. There are some very interesting things happening, uh, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to keep things as a surprise. I'm going to turn my game drive channel right off because it's making me sad. <laughs> and Pat, on the sub slightly different subject, we spoke about the possibility of our Nkuma lioness being pregnant and whether or not they have cubs. And I said that I think amber eyes and the young female might be pregnant, but they may also not be. And Pat was wondering about the gestation period of a lion. It is roughly a hundred Ah, sorry, it's Cat, not Pat. <laughs> Good morning to Cat. Sorry, Cat, your name sounded like Pat through my earpiece. Cat, the gestation is roughly 100 days, so about just over three months. It depends, just like with human beings, it depends on the, the individual herself, and that's obviously an average of the gestation period, and it will also differ from place to place, from area to area. So the gestation period of the lions will change depending upon where they are. My hat's getting ridiculous, but I can't fix it because my microphone's sitting in it. So you'll just have to deal with it. There's nothing I can do. I'm sorry. I can't fix it while I am watching lions. There is a very, very pleasant surprise awaiting you, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Right, let me shuffle around and try and see if we can't get you a view of these cubs. Oh, hold on. Let's just look at the birds for a second. Chirping away. Can you see them in this tree here, Darby? Yeah, in this tree straight in front of us, the big tree. Oh, two of them have flown, three of them have flown. That is not the one I meant, but that's a bird as well. But absolutely. That was a forktail trongo. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. I wasn't very specific there. And now they're all gone. That's okay. There were white crested helmet shrikes, and I heard them calling, so I thought that you might enjoy listening to them and watching them at the same time. But that was entirely my fault. I do this to the cameraman often. I get shouted at a lot. You see that bird over there? What bird? Which one? <laughs> you know, in the tree, the one with the leaves. Right, let's see what we can do without breaks. Change our view a little bit. I can't even see the lines at all now. I think we're about to hit, a, hit something. Can I stop? Um, mm, I wouldn't call this vastly improved. I don't know how you feel, Dave. There's a cub. There's two cubs. <laughs> no, I definitely wouldn't say we have vastly improved your viewing experience. Oh, but Mom's just shuffled around, giving us the perfect view of little cub. Now, of course, as these cubs get slightly older. And as, or at least as the younger set gets slightly older and join up with this group, it will start getting difficult. We know at the moment which mother is which, but it is going to start getting difficult. You're not going to be able to say that is definitely the mother, because lions allosuckle. Hey girl, you're searching desperately for peace and shade. Thank you very much. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And in the gap there as well. That was hugely considerate of her. 
Now, are the little ones going to come bumbling after Mum, or are they going to allow her a moment's peace? Shame. She looks thoroughly put upon. But what I was going to say is cubs aloe suckle. Oh, sorry, lions aloe suckle. In other words, they will feed cubs that are not their own. If they are lactating, they will suckle other lionesses' cubs. Just goes to show how incredibly important that bond between the different lionesses is. Here we go. A view of a little one, admittedly through the trees, having been unceremoniously displaced from mom. No more breakfast for you. I'm just going to have to enjoy the morning sun for a bit until it gets a little bit too hot. So cute. And welcome to Dora, who I think, oh cute, might be a one of our newest viewers. Dora, good morning and welcome to the Sunrise Safari. It's lovely to hear from you and please feel free to keep on sending through your questions. Dora says that she's surprised that the lions are not agitated by the presence of the safari vehicles. Are they used to people in cars? And the answer is yes, they are. So basically from, they are, from the time that they were the cubs, the size of the ones that we are looking at, these animals around here have grown up with safari vehicles moving around and about them. We are as much a part of their landscape, or at least their reality, as the other more natural aspects of it. She's also going to come move to the shade. Step over the cubs ever so delicately. Sorry, Dora, I will finish explaining in a moment. You can see, look, she's walking right towards us, with absolutely not even a sideways glance in our direction. Head rub with her sister. She might, oh, no, she's going to flop there right behind the vehicle. So, Dora, perfectly explained by our animals themselves. Um, if you needed any further proof, I think that she has just provided it for us. Lioness is completely happy with us in the vehicle. It is absolutely critical never to take that for granted, though. So we always try and treat our animals with utmost respect if we see that we are agitating them, if they're in a bad mood, if even if you know that animal like the back of your hand, if you see that they're unhappy, you leave them alone. And the same applies to elephants. Um, with cubs, for example, we restrict the number of vehicles that can actually come into the sighting. So we don't allow other vehicles in in a situation like this. This situation, for example, We've got the cubs here. In theory, they're old enough um, and they're, they're alert enough for us to be able to have two vehicles here. However, the situation that they're in, the place that we're in, we won't put another vehicle in here. It will just be us until somebody else would like to come and join it. And that's because the amount of disturbance that they would have to cause to get in here um, and to create a position where both vehicles could see is just not appropriate. So we treat them with utmost respect, and it's very important to remember that they are dangerous wild animals. And you would be a fool to forget that. Okay, admittedly what you're looking at right now is not so dangerous. That's a cub. It's going to grow up to be dangerous, but at the moment it is just a little ball of very sleepy fluff. It is important to remember that, and that the barrier of human and lion interaction is there. It's very solid but you don't ever want to push things to the point that that boundary is broken or that lack of respect is, that line is crossed. And that's why it's very important to, I've always, I've worked in places where there's very little respect and I've not found that I've enjoyed that. And I've worked in places where the safari guides have utmost respect for the animals. I wish I could tell you that all safari guides do. That's not true though. There are places where through bad training or through ignorance the ethics are not followed as they should be. But I'm very pleased to tell you that that is absolutely not the case here. Oh, Mum, is that nice? Finally the cubs are asleep. You can have a morning nap. I think that is a feeling that all mothers know very well, I'm told. I have no idea what that's like. I... <laughs> But I can only imagine, I have friends with small children, and that moment when the kids go to sleep and you can finally, finally 
have catch a little bit of a, a nap. Brent said the same yesterday. He said when he was sitting with them at Buffles of Dam, there was just this sort of constant harassment of the poor mother by the cubs. Oh, by the way, some of you with eagle eyes may have spotted the blood on the back of her neck. That's probably from a tick. It's probably from a tick that burst. Probably, actually, from the cubs. Biting and chewing on the back of her neck. Welcome to Lauren, who is another one of our new viewers, and I hope that you become addicted as all of our rest of our viewers are. We have had an extraordinary morning for you to start watching, Lauren. Well, I say extraordinary. We've had some very extraordinary few days the last few weeks. Lauren, no, we can't drive wherever we want, and yes, there are certain roads we have to stick to. The Sabi Sand is divided into different properties, which is owned by, that are owned by different people. We are, as, as is every lodge, every place that you come to out here, restricted as to where you can go. And that's because you don't want too many vehicles in one place or utilizing one patch of land. So we are able to traverse Juma, Arethusa and Cheetah Plains. Aubrey, who was in the sighting at the start of the Sunrise Safari, he can go through Juma, he can go into Buffleshook, Torchwood and Cheetah Plains as well. So there's, there's just differences in terms of the, the, the places that different vehicles can go. And then, of course, off-roading as well. We've done some serious off-roading, but we always do that very carefully. Well, I mean, apart from, you know, the flat tires and the ripped brake line. But we do that very carefully. We are careful to drive in places where it's acceptable to. If it had been wet, if we were following the sighting in midsummer, in the rain or in the mud, we absolutely wouldn't have driven here. I can tell you that straight away. We would not have wanted to risk doing the damage to the seep line. So we would never have been, well also you would have got stuck. We would never have managed it in the rainy season. Alright, well finishing off that question, I believe that Brent would like to provide a quick update on his whereabouts. Maybe he'll reveal the surprise, maybe he won't. You'll just have to wait to find out. To reveal a surprise, one actually has to find the surprise, and it seems like everyone's, you know, all the cats on Juma are taking us into some very difficult areas this morning. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet. I'm going to just try to see if I can find it first. Now, this is one of my favorite areas to walk which makes it one of the more difficult areas to drive. Okay, you can see we're trying to look down into the drainage system here. Ah, oh, here we go. There he is. Let me just update Aubrey. Orbs, you got a visual? Orbs, there's very much a visual from the side. Okay, now. Who can tell me which leopard that is? He's got a kill. Now if we go up onto his face, which one of our leopard experts can tell me who that is? If you know, send me an email, questions at wildearth.tv, or use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Now this is quite an interesting story. I don't think he's the leopard who killed this adult impala. From the story the trackers have been telling me, I think it was young Sindile who killed this impala and this leopard has stolen it from him. They had a fight. Now Herbie was telling me you can actually see some scratch marks. We can't see them. They might be on the other side but a big male impala. 
hopefully he's able to eat enough of it that he's able to put it up in the tree. Oh dear, I've pulled my earpiece out in that getting into this position. Okay, it's back. So as you can see right down in the deep drainage line, that's why we couldn't see him from the other side earlier. We've just found this little gap through there. You can see he's quite nervous. He's been in a fight already with another leopard today. And we think it could have been even young Sindile. And just zoom in on his neck there, please. To the left. Oh, no, he put his head down. But Herbert said we could see some big claw marks on him somewhere. Isn't this incredible? So, oh, you guys are a bit slow this morning. I thought I'd have some answers to which leopard this was. Remember, hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv. Which male leopard is feasting on this impala? So we've got I'm just trying to get a photo of his So some be some people think it's Anderson it's definitely not Anderson I'm not 100% sure, actually, I thought, let me just have a, ah, there's a dead giveaway, we zoom in on, yes, I'm pretty certain that this is in Vula, and you see those very tattered ears, very distinct in Vula, I still can't see these fresh claw marks, they could be on the other side of his body, he is in a very precarious place. Um, very, very difficult to even get close to him. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed we got to, to get this little window through the trees here. So, very exciting. Uh, in Vula, and it looks like he might have chased Sindile off the kill and stolen it, and they had a bit of a fight. So, the tracker said they had tracks of leopards fighting. And very impressive if Sindile did decide to tackle an adult male. There he is there. And it's a fully grown male impala. And hopefully he does put it in the tree. Lots of lions and hyenas around. So the reason, I haven't had a good look at his spot pattern yet, but the reason I think it's in Vula is his ears. He's got particularly tatty ears. There we are, you can see the male impala's horns there. What a cat filled morning it's been. Tried a couple of spots, and this is the only spot where we can really get a view. And I'd say the little river system in is probably about 10 or 12 foot deep, and he's right in the bottom. Now, 
Richard Kennedy says he thought Mvula was too old to fight. Well, not when you're fighting little boys. <laughs> Two-year-old male leopard didn't probably know what too much to do in a fight. Uh, he'd probably avoid, he definitely avoids fighting with Kojima and Tingana. But a young, young leopard, a bit inexperienced, he would definitely uh, take a chance and probably win that battle. And body size, young Sandile is probably still a good 15, 20 kilos off from Vula's weight. So it looks like the stomach has already been removed. Quite difficult to see from where we are. Uh, hopefully, yes, the stomach has been removed. Actually lying, it's just there. There's the stomach there. So it should be light enough for him to lift into this tree. And there's some nice trees that he could put it in here. There's a lovely Timburti tree. That would make a good spot for him to put it in. So if we come out... And have a look. There's this Timburti tree, big Timburti tree here, and be a good spot for him to put that kill in. Now let's stick with him. Let me get my shoulder out of the way. So there are quite a few other vehicles coming here, and there's only really two spots to see. And Aubrey's spot isn't as good as ours. I just need to talk to Aubrey quickly. Orbs, if you want to come this side to have a have a look, I'll make space for you. It's quite a nice view from here. Oh, it looks like Orbey's managed to find a window of his own on the other side of the Riverbed. Mm. He's very conscious. Uh, kills on the ground and he's stolen it. So he's all. Well, looking over his shoulder, it's not uncommon um, that even a young male leopard who's been robbed by a big male leopard, uh, he might come back to inspect. Sorry guys, I just need to be on the game drive radio again for a little bit. Ephraim, Ephraim. Is he consciously, constantly looking up, listening? And that's not only for another leopard that might come, it's also for hyenas. Ephraim or Andrew? Uh, what's your position? Copy, when you get to uh, that little two track, just let me know. So we've had a bit of a dry run with leopards, so there's quite a lot of people quite desperate for leopards. I'm pretty confident he's going to be here on the Sunset Safari. One must remember that quite a lot of the vehicles here, the guests might be leaving today, so they might not get another chance to see a leopard like this. So we, we, we love to share, and it, it helps all of us, because we all manage to get into sightings that each other find. So we're just going to keep looking at Leopard. We are probably going to leave in the next five or six minutes. But while we've still got the chance, let's watch Mvula devour that male Impala.
Now we're lucky that there's actually a big animal path that is causing this little window for us. He's eating the rump, so lots of nice meat there, nice and tender. You can get at it without too much effort. Now, he has had a bit of a, a hard time. Those scratches on him, I think, might not be from Sindile. It could be from Gajima. He's had a dust-up with Gajima in the last week. Now, for an old male leopard, finding a young male leopard on a kill is a bonus. That means he gets lots of nice meat with minimal effort. He'd do the same if he found a female leopard on a kill. He would steal it, using his size to his advantage. I'm really hoping he puts it into the tree as we could have some spectacular eye level views if he does. Richard in British Columbia is asking, why hasn't Mvula hoisted yet? Now, he's quite old. He's been in a, in a fight with Gajima recently, and it's possible he might be carrying a few little injuries, and it might be a little bit heavy for him to hoist just yet. Uh, leopards will often feed on the ground for a while, and once it's easier for them to take the carcass up the tree, they will. Now, however, if hyenas had to arrive on the scene, he would probably scoot that up the tree much faster so it's more comfortable for him to feed on the ground than it is in a tree and at the moment there's no external threats on the carcass so that's why he's going to keep feeding on it in certain areas with low predator densities so low lion and hyena densities uh, leopards will not hoist their kills they will actually just put them under a bush uh, to hide them from the vultures and feed but in an area like the Sabi Sands, where we do have very high lion and hyena uh, densities, uh, they often will hoist. <laughs> oh, there we go, he's pulling the carcass. And it seems like he's eaten a lot of the one back leg and starting on the other so the stomach's out so that means he's lost oh, up to about 15 10 to 15 kilograms of weight so a male impala probably weighs about 60 kilograms he probably weighs about 75 80 kilograms um, but leopards are said to be able to pull one and a half times their body weight up a tree. And of course, that's a male leopard in its prime. As you know, Mr. Mvula is towards the end of years, but he seems to be doing quite well. Sneaky mating here, stealing a kill there, catching a warthog there. It's not uncommon for male leopards once they lose their territory and to survive for a couple of years afterwards I'm just going to see if I, I can roll forward a little bit a tiny bit if we roll forward too much um, we won't be making it home for breakfast how's that let's check Okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get from here. Without us ending up in the, the river system. Okay, if keep coming, 
Uh, then when you get that little two track that goes southwest towards uh, Gallagher shortcut, uh, turn to the fire break and then head east onto the eastern bank of that Shkova um, and you'll see my Nkonzo. I'm going to be coming out now. Okay, so Ephraim is coming to enjoy this leopard and we're going to make our way out. Okay, now comes the precarious bit. Do you think my clutch control is enough that we don't disappear? I should hope so. I have been driving game drive vehicles since 11 years old. So while we get out of here, uh, let's go back to Jamie, who still got those wonderful little cubs. We do indeed, and unfortunately not the best view of the wonderful little cubs. I know Brent is contemplating how he's going to make his way out of the sighting. I'm quite trying to work out exactly how I'm going to manage it. Now, the reason I haven't repositioned is, first of all, I don't think we're going to get a better view, but second of all, our lioness that plonked herself down behind us is, um, first of all, she's very asleep, as you can see. She's looking thoroughly comfortable. <laughs> And because she's a new mom, there you can see the dark rings of the suckle marks on her belly. So this is probably the mother of the other set of cubs, the one near Buffelshook Dam. Oh, yes, get some sun there. So she probably hasn't had very much sleep. Yes, give that chest a good scratch. And she just looks so incredibly peaceful and contented. And um, so that's why we haven't repositioned, because... Look at where we are in comparison to her. She's come and plonked herself behind the vehicle. So we haven't been able to reposition. We shall settle with our view here for now. I really don't want to wake her up. I would feel absolutely terrible. Darby, we might have to sit here for... Yeah, we might be here all day. That's okay. There are worse things. Our line is... <laughs> The rest of the crew has offered to bring us snacks, so that is a relief. Um, I was worried about that. That was my biggest concern, actually. No, I'm not even joking. That was my biggest concern. Um, so, yes, we've got a lioness right behind the vehicle. I don't think we can move at the moment. The only thing is that at some point, our lionesses that are in the sun are going to get too hot. And they will move and they will bring the cubs with them because it has warmed up substantially. There's our other mom. So the two new mothers have found a patch of shade away from the gnawing little teeth and attentions of our cubs. And the cubs, on the other hand, are having exhausted themselves last night, moving all the way from Buffelzug Dam to where we are now on the western side of Quarantine, on the western side of Juma, so they've probably at some point last night covered a distance of close to, I would guess, at five kilometers, because bear in mind they're not going to walk in a straight line. So just over, just close to three miles last night, which is a long way for little leggies to keep up with, especially with all of the scampering about that they do. And they have completely and thoroughly exhausted themselves. I think we all find ourselves faced with considerable relief that they have made it through that buffalo hunt unscathed. It is a dangerous time for these little ones, probably one of the most dangerous that they will face over the coming months. They're still very young, which means they're not very fast. Even a human being at this point could probably keep up with these lion cubs. Not that I'm going to test it, because their mother, on the other hand, is a totally different story. But they could, they, they, a human being could run as fast as the lion cubs can run now. They're just, their little legs are so short. And they're not quite as agile as Karula's lovely leopard cubs, which are able to disappear up into trees for safety. And they are going to be spending more and more time with the pride, which means it is a dangerous time for them. And we will have to watch their comings and goings with considerable trepidation, but at the same time considerable joy. That we have got them. We're, we're convinced there is at least one male in this group. Whether or not is, there's more, I'm not 100% sure just yet. I think it's two, males, uh, two females and a male. But we'll have to 
go back and compare screenshots because there was too much happening for us to properly look at the sex of the cubs at the same time. And then we'll have to wait for the other set to get big enough and start joining them. Now, yesterday we were treated to a truly family scene with one Birmingham boy, admittedly quite horribly injured around his mouth, but one Birmingham boy and the group of lionesses and the adorable little cubs. Ellen in Arkansas, the reason he didn't harm those cubs is absolutely because he thinks either he is the father or one of his coalition members is the father. So as soon as a male lion takes over a territory, and along with that come several different lion prides, he will start, they usually, will start mating with the females, and immediately they become tolerant of new cubs. It's one of the big reasons why females with young, young cubs, during a pride takeover, during a coalition takeover, they will actually try and mate with the males to trick them into thinking they've fathered brand new cubs, even if the cubs are not theirs. How incredible is that? So the the male lions may be barking up the wrong tree, because there's studies that recently suggest that the, fem the lionesses are as promiscuous as possible in order to protect their young cubs. The Absolutely, the Birmingham boys are most likely the fathers. Um, we don't, of course, know which of them the father may be. We've, we've seen pretty much all of the Birmingham boys mating. In fact, no, it's not quite the right time frame. I was about to say potentially even the Birmingham boy known as Scrapper might have fathered a set of these cubs, but I don't think that would be the case. I think, unfortunately, he, he didn't... Be, Scrapper has since died of, we think, hunting-related injuries, as in he was hunting buffalo and he got injured. Um, so he might have, I, th I thought he might have been the father, but I think unfortunately our time frame just doesn't quite work out that way. Uh, not quite there. It would have been nice, though, to imagine that he had some legacy left behind. Now, all of the Birmingham boys will treat the cubs with a sort of lazy tolerance, is what you would call it. They don't really play any kind of a role in actively fathering the cubs, but they'll let the cubs climb all over them and chew on their ears. I think that the cubs did well yesterday to avoid him because he, the, that particular Birmingham boy has got that nasty wound on his face, which I think is going to be very painful and I think is probably going to result in a slightly shorter temper than he might otherwise normally have. Oh, little cub. Are oh, you just so exhausted? Got that fast breathing, almost panting, but that very fast breathing that baby, all babies, baby mammals have. Their metabolism working so fast to do all of that growing. And I promise you, not that I would encourage it, but if you were to, for some reason, not watch our live safaris for the next six months and you happen to hop back on in six months' time, you would be shocked at how much these cubs will have grown. Lion cubs all, all mammals out here grow fast, but lion cubs do grow very, very quickly. Cat pile. That lioness is starting to lick her feet. She give, it might give us a yawn or two, and then I think that might be the indication that she's about to get up and move into the shade. And I think once she does, that might prompt the others to get up and move, particularly the cubs. Hmm, what a pleasant way to spend a Tuesday morning. It's been a thoroughly exciting day. And of course there is the prospect of fixing Rusty's brake line. Phoning Steph, first of all, and letting him know that I broke Rusty's brake line. And then <laughs> trying to fix it frantically. Luckily brakes are not hugely essential out here. That of course is if we ever get out of here which is an entirely different kettle of fish. We'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it in the next few minutes. <laughs> the end of the safari is drawing nearer and nearer, and our lioness has shown no signs of shifting herself. She's just made herself look more comfortable. I can't even see her. She's so close to the vehicle. I can just see toes sticking up in the air. She just looks so content. You happy there, girl? 
Did you pick the best possible spot? Yep. We even once had the, recently, we had the lioness and the male lion. The Amber Eyes was trying to get away from the male lion that had been mating with her and rejoin the rest of her pride. And they ended up using the vehicle. She used the vehicle as almost like a sort of a hide-and-seek type tool. She'd try and creep around him on one side of the vehicle behind us. He would cross in front of us and block her, so she'd try the other side. She was basically slinking about around our back tyres while the Birmingham boy watched in confusion from the front of the vehicle trying to work out why he was being rejected so thoroughly. And the animals do, do learn, or do use the vehicle as they would the other parts of the landscape. And while we've been sitting here, we've had some really lovely bird calls. A high-pitched whistling that we've been hearing. There's some scrub robins calling. They've got a number of different calls, and that is one of them. I believe. There's some cysticulars, forktail drongos, hornbills, helmet shrikes. It's all beautiful atmosphere, a wonderful way to spend a winter's morning. Well, we stay stranded with surrounded by lions. Let's go across to Brent so that he can chat to you for the last few moments and then say his farewells, and we'll be back with you shortly. Well, we're trying to see if we can possibly maybe have a little bit more luck. Oh, not that we should complain about our luck so far. Uh, I'm just coming to have a quick look to see if we can find that mating pair again. And it doesn't look like any of their tracks heading to the north and let's have a look maybe they're just in here maybe they've headed back towards Vuyatela access well we're gonna keep looking come on lions where are you hiding no tracks going to the north that's great news it means we got nine different cats that we know about on Juma today and I'm pretty sure all of them should be there for the sunset safari as well so now is it nine different cats we got five Nkuma adult lionesses three cubs a one male ten different cats on Juma including Mvula I just want to make sure none of their tracks cross this way they were just in here earlier today and it's quite open so let's see if we can spot them from the road if not we'll just go back to the other lines with Jamie spoilt for choice today but it has been incredible and uh, it's been wonderful having so many cats around a uh, bit of a half-hearted attempt at, at, at hunting buffalo by the Nkuma ladies but I think what they're gonna do is wait for dark and I think they might have a bit more success then. Pretty sure these mating lines are around here somewhere. Where are you hiding, kitty cats? And it was really exciting to track them by roar rather than by footprint. Well, no, no sign of uh, the lions in this area. I'm pretty sure they might have found some shade somewhere close by. Uh, we're going to keep checking, but it's been absolutely fat. Oh, <laughs> hello, mating kitties. Hello, guys. Heads up. Hopefully, we've arrived just in time for a bit of mating. So Jamie's lines are flat, at least we have a head up. 
and with mating pairs there's always a possibility that there might be a bit of mating shortly. Oh, we're about to surprise a vehicle on their way to the gate, I'm sure to pick up someone. And you can see the lions took no notice. So this is the fifth in Kuhuma Lioness and the Birmingham boy with the hole in his lip. Come on guys, give us a little action before the end of the show. You guys have one minute, 30 seconds to put on a performance. If not, maybe they're saving it for the sunset safari. So they've only moved about 100 meters from where we last had them. And 100 meters in the right direction, deeper into Juma, further from the Buffles Hook boundary. Unfortunately, the water of Sydney's might pull them there a little later. And maybe in three months, this lioness is going to have cubs. Although we do think she's already had cubs, she might have lost them. It'll be interesting to follow what happens uh, to see what the outcome is. Whether she has lost those cubs and that's why she's mating again. Or uh, she, the male's getting confused by her hormone levels. Well, it doesn't look like the lions are going to perform in the last 30 seconds. So from myself, Jamie, Dangerous Dave and carrot and of course the ladies in final control uh, have an absolutely splendid rest of your day and we'll see you in a few short hours with 10 different cats on juma how exciting so for the last few seconds let's look at the lion <laughs>